Hey, everybody. Well, like I have to get rid of my logo first. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. Do you know that this is our 10th episode? Are you serious? Counting the one last week, you did a solo. Right. And, and I did, did a solo. Because sometimes we just have to fly solo. Woo! <laughs> Look, mono hands. <laughs> so, um, my name is Matt Gleason. This show is Modern Art Blitz. We talk about contemporary art and the world around it, culture, society, and sometimes why we are not wearing shoes. But for some reason or another, I cannot do this show on my own. As was proven last week, afterwards, I just collapsed. Oh my it, God, it was a lot so of energy. hard. It and was, you did the same, okay, yeah, last Sunday yeah, you were. Yeah, this is my lovely co-host. It's totally apparent how lovely she is, Lisa <laughs> Derrick. Hello. And uh, Lisa, uh, Lisa, now a week ago tonight, you were here Naked to the world by yourself. You had two people on the couch with you, though. I had two people on the couch sexy. and a dead cat in my freezer. A dead cat. <laughs> <laughs> He's being taxidermied. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So what happened in the art world this week? Aside from my cat getting Asi taxidermied? Aside from, from, from the belated <laughs> passing of Mr. Bruce. <laughs> Well, the thing that's the most exciting, I think, for everyone in Los Angeles and possibly in the U.S. is the acquisition by LACMA, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, of a very important John Lautner house. The Lautner house, which was also in, the legendarily... Big, the Big Lebowski. The house in the Big Lebowski, yes. The uh, house abides now in as part of LACMA's permanent collection. You know, Michael Govan maybe is the dude and the dude abides. I guess we can actually say the institution abides. Exactly. It, the house was owned by, is owned by a guy named Mr. Goldstein and um, it'll be used for exhibitions, conferences, and other gatherings, but maybe we can get a sneak tour and like... I'm thinking that <laughs> Michael Govan, to raise money for LACMA, could do Airbnb nothing it. better <laughs> than... Airbnb no better, but <laughs> sleepovers. Exactly. That's like LACMA, Air, LACMA sleepovers. Trusty sleepovers. So exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping uh, Michael Govan can uh, have enough sensibility to list it for less than the $500 a night that the house Charles Bukowski grew up in is listing for. Oh, which wow, is that's, my, that's my goal is to is to to spend the night there. Well, now I think we all know what you're going to be getting for one of your birthdays. Hey, everybody, pool your money just for me exactly we are living in the age of the uh what is that site called where you raise money gofundme the gofund go kickstarter gofundme Ki kickstarter oh. ass it's, they, they could call it come fund me more than gofund me though go <laughs> no, 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 no okay 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 <laughs> well the house comes with a 17 million dollar endowment and it includes a Whoa. Okay. That's that's the real prize. Exactly. I know what Govan's thinking. Out of hell with the sticks and bones that make up that house. Give me the seventeen million. Yeah, and but there's a James Terrell sky space involved as well. Ah, uh, you gotta you gotta have an artwork there. Yep. Exactly, and it's considered an example of American organic architecture, which has nothing to do with the wood and Parmesan cheese that's being sold now. Oh God, American orgasmic architecture. Orgasmic right. is something else. Organic. 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 Okay, yes, which means not geometric. And then yet there's all those triangles in the ceiling. Yeah. I don't know. It's, anyway, it's, it's, so hey, we have a great show today. We have uh, two guests. Uh, a little later, uh, Greg Gibbs is going to be on. And I know that like right now, every lowbrow fanatic, you know, from here to um, Sherman Oaks is, uh, is watching. Because Greg Gibbs is a legend of lowbrow. Um, and our first guest uh, is, she has a big museum show opening. At, the, at one of my favorite museums ever, the Vincent Price Museum at East Los Angeles, at East Elac. Los Elac. Oh yeah, Elac, not Exelax, Elac. Elac. East Los Angeles College. Com College. College or community? Is there two C's? And there might be two C's, but what's weird about it is that it's not actually in East LA, it's in Monterey Park, which is a separate city. Well, they, I'm uh, sorry, you're going to have to change your name to MPAC. <laughs> we'll have to talk about that with her. Um, but in addition to the well-deserved museum show, she is a longtime fixture on the Los Angeles art scene, a very accomplished artist. I've curated her in many group shows and uh, will so in the future, of course, barring uh, somebody like Gagosian or Zwerner taking her and saying, don't have anything to do with that bum. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a great painter, and we'll find out if she prefers to be called a painter or an artist. That'll be my first question for her. Linda Ariola. Hi, Linda. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. 
And, wow, uh, what a beautiful pyramid. Pyramid. What is that? An Aztec pyramid. That is, is that, a pyramid, yeah. Is that... that was an installation that I did in 2008. 2008. Where was, that, where was this installation? I missed this that show. That was at um, Tropico de Nopal, which ah, is... Ah, yes, uh, yes. Reyes Rodriguez had a gallery there. Yeah, the um, late, great uh, Tropico de Nopal. Yeah. Although the space is still there, right? Space is still there. I believe he's using it more as a music venue now. Uh, rent, yeah. Event rental? Yes, we could, exactly. We could, we could have our quinceanera there. So. <laughs> yes, and that actually was part of one of, that was my first solo show, believe it or not. And wow. that was a piece Beautiful. that um, I got a grant. There was there was a grant at one time for uh, from the Durfee Foundation. They don't exist any, I don't think they give the grants. Durfee, the Durfees don't exist anymore? Not as a, I don't think they give grants to artists any longer, but at that time they did, and it was probably Nobody one Nobody gives grants to artists anymore except yeah. uh, GoFundMe. And yeah. MacArthur. Yeah. The MacArthur grants. The MacArthur grants. MacArthur Genius grants do do sometimes go to artists, but they go to all different sorts of people. Well, not being a genius, I can't tell you. <laughs> so, is this based on the Great Pyramid in Mexico City? It is. It's based on the pyramids that are in Mexico City, outside of Mexico City, and um, the that was one of the most inspirational, I, I would say. Um, objects or you know artworks in my life when i was about 19 i visited mexico and when i first got a glimpse of those did, did you climb the pyramid i did you did I oh did. wow you're allowed to climb it at that time at i don't think you time, are no. any longer i'm not sure without it's been getting years without ago. getting sacrifice it's, it's the yeah. trick is to get down because yeah. most people <laughs> would go up they or at least come back down. in the, in the, the good, old days, yeah. in the good old days in the good old days yeah. exactly <laughs> grandpa used yeah. to tell me wow. uh, yeah so um now uh are you an la native I am. You are? You grew up, where'd you grow up? I grew up in El Sereno. Do El you know Sereno. where that is? Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and um, what high school did you go to? I went to Wilson High School. Wilson? Which okay. is in the area, okay. yeah. And so I'm a native and I'm local and I've lived there most of my life. And, so. and, uh, and now did you, uh, did you, where'd you go to college? I went to Cal State LA and UCLA. Cal State LA! Woo! Golden Eagles! Oh, you were a Diablo, right? I We're, think so. I'm not only. I wasn't into all that There was that a big stuff. scandal when the new president came in yeah. and changed the logo from Diablo to Golden Eagle. Well, was wait, it, was, was, it, was he a Christian? Is that why he did no, it? No, he had been an Eagle Scout, I discovered. Oh, so it had <laughs> nothing to do with a religious bias. <laughs> Nothing okay. to do with the religious bias. No, no, no. There was no religious bias. <laughs> okay, so, so um, now are you... Um, I know you primarily as a painter. Are you, do you consider yourself an, a painter who is a, an artist who is a painter wow. or a painter who is an artist? Well, actually, I'm, I study sculpture. So oh, actually, wow. the first wow. thing I really ventured into was sculpture. So I did sculpture for years, and that um, pyramid was uh, sort of going back because I started painting. I went to school, studied sculpture at Cal State LA, and then I graduated and went to architecture school, and I got a degree in architecture. Mm -hmm. So okay. I actually am versed in the three-dimensional more so than the two-dimensional, but after architecture school, I went flat. I went two-dimensional, uh -huh. I think partially because of the drawing that I was doing. I was drawing three-dimensional objects, and I fell in love with line, and so I started doing painting right after school in 91. Wow. So most of my work is, is on uh, flat, and it's of that sort. Wow. You know, I started with a series on wood. So there's a, that piece was done... Um, I was a recipient of the Cola Fellowship in 2010. So that oh, one there that? is oh, wow. an installation. The city of Los wow. Angeles. Yeah, that's, that's an city annual of... grant. Wow, that, that is beautiful. Installation. No, that's like a pretty Whoa. minimal piece. Which, what, what's, the, minimal. what's this one here? That one's called Halo. That was also in the um, Cola show. So that, that one is, you know, I'm starting to explore painting, but I'm also using wood. I'm going back to the materials that are really elemental and beautiful, I think. And wow sort of applying color and line and um oh, now is this is this two pieces or one those are two different pieces two different pieces yeah. the other is piece... this an installation shot or they just happen to be next to each they other they just happen to be next we'll to see each what other. happens is if, if, if we we put two pieces together in our slideshow sometimes because um yeah that's you know just the way if, it works. if you if you if it's if it's not long enough you're just gonna yeah. have blank so why not yeah. put more information actually in yeah. those two what pieces is... they work really nicely together okay, well, what's, what's up with the tartan pattern there is that a tartan <laughs> pattern well actually there's a big gap of time between those two the long one with the wood is done in 2010 and um, that's part of the Kohler show and then this other one is uh we're jumping up to 2014 oh, and wow, my okay. work kind of shifted and I started to do pieces that are very linear I have used bands of color um, my, my mic? mic? Who's mic? My mic. My mic. Yeah? Uh-oh. Oh, it's oh, oh. 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 microscope. <laughs> Is that better? Yes. 
All right. I'm not re I'm not diving in. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so so that was actually that's very small. It's probably no more than ten by six by ten, something like that. So oh, those wow. were studies for pieces that I'm you'll see later that are part of the show at. Um, no, here's some Vincent more. Price. Wow. Yeah, those are also studies. Wow. Oh, okay. Um, so what, what is the show coming up at the Vincent Price? Is this. Uh, is this a uh, career retrospective, a mid-career retrospective? It's, it's sort of a show? survey. It's sort of a survey. It's, it's from 2005 to 2016. Oh, wow. So you'll see some older work, um, and then most of it, uh, it's like in threes, you know, some older work, and then two-thirds of it would be from two, 2013 to present. And oh, okay. those are so all new pieces. Is it like seeing like old relatives at like where, where you only see them at like, <laughs> yeah, at, yeah. Um, it's like, like, seeing, like you see them at baptisms, yeah. weddings, that's and funerals, it. right? Yeah, and you're like, like, oh, hey, yeah, the old, oh, that, that you can't I. say no to the old relatives. So they're yeah, there. Okay, okay, yeah, so. I really, you know, Ooh, I have to respect that. This is that. bright yellow. Wow. Oh, wow. That's, now you're going on, you're going a little Mondrian on us Now that's the, that's the current piece. That's a 2015. And that's kind of reminiscent of what you'll see in the new work. And I've sort of changed my direction. I'm not doing grids so much in the, in the lots of empty um, negative space. They're sort of, I consider a much more architectural now. So, so uh, what is your fascination with um, the minimal and, and kind of an absence of representation? What's going on there? That was all inspired by that trip to Mexico and seeing the pyramids. I wow. felt like I was so in awe of what was done with the simple geometric forms. And the sensation that I got was, was this powerful presence. And I thought, I wanted to do the same. I wanted to create works that were kind of created sensations and ideas about these. They almost seemed otherworldly. I wanted to venture into that realm. I didn't wow. want to. I didn't want to stay put in this world with realism and um, you know, working with things that were familiar. I wanted to sort of venture out and help the, help the public sort of go with me in that so arena. Have, do do each of these works have specific spiritual and emotional meaning for you? Um, not specific. I mean, I do have pieces. Some of the small pieces might, um, there, there was some that were, there were some that were very personal and they did have some personal meaning, but it's more, um, the work is done intuitively. And then depending on what space I'm in, what's going on in the world, what's going on personally, sometimes I apply uh, a title that might work with that. that. What, that what is this title? Is what, is, beautiful. what is this title? Um, this one's untitled, believe it. <laughs> there, that are, was a trick question. there are okay. there are a lot of untitled wow. pieces. Okay, so now I've seen I've seen this um, I've seen this actually uh, the image now is um, I've seen this used in the media from the Vincent Price Art Museum. Why did they pick this one? You think? Well, actually, the curator of the show is William Moreno, who's done a fantastic job. I'm so happy to be working with him. He particularly picked that piece. Okay. I'm really glad. It's called Towers, and this is one of those pieces that you know. It's intuitive, but it also has an overlay of um, meaning. That sort of, you know, the red, white, and blue is somewhat of a patriotic idea, but the tower's idea is about, you know, kind of referring to the 9-11 incident. Right. Instead of two towers, we have three towers. Right. And it's sort of an idea about transforming and kind of coming up from the ashes and, you know, taking another form. I can't, I can't get this thing to go back and forth. Yeah, oh, there it well, okay. went problems. forward twice. I need to get this oh, sorry. Really, is it that bad? Something would happen with the pack, so we'll it's probably talking. Okay, about get it get it real close to your mouth. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Uh, okay, ah, sorry about that. We're having sorry. a little technical yeah. difficulties. Probably lost half the interview. Huh? Not no, the first no, time. No, no. <laughs> oh, um, now that piece is called Evergreen, and that was done in 2008 for my solo exhibit. And that exhibit was called Vaguely Chicana by... Vaguely Chicana? Yeah, just in case that Chicana question comes up again. Who, who, was, the, who was the curator? <laughs> who, who, was the, who was the curator on that? That was Reyes Rodriguez. Okay, so, so are you Vaguely Chicana? Um, I'm very much Chicana, but you are the show Chicana. was Vaguely Chicana, yeah. So, so, so uh, do you consider yourself a, an artist who happens to be Chicana, or are you a Chicana artist? Um, I'm a Chicana and I do artwork. <laughs> You're a Chicana right and you do artwork. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, so what, when, when one, a, a casual glance at your work doesn't see any of what one might consider to be the traditional or maybe the cliched forms that are the, found in a lot of Chicano art, right. what about your art, is there something other than the fact that a Chicano has made it yeah. that makes this uh, Chicano art? Um, not really. I mean, you know, if you look at, 
where I've been and where I've lived, you know, those are the things that influence the work. And I'm saying, it's, you know, I consider myself Chicana and this is what I do. So if there are any associations, I mean, I was talking about my trip to Mexico, you know, being mm -hmm. completely in awe of the architecture and the, you know, the structures. I mean, I would consider that to be very influential and, and tied to my And yet, I mean, I'm just saying, because it's not like a direct sort of no, uh, echoing, you're, no. you're actually creating new forms. I am. And, and Those so, are the influences, but I like to think that it's, it's a very broad and universal type of work. Now, is there, obviously you've had some success uh, in, in exhibiting and you showed at Tropico de Nepal, mm -hmm. but is there any uh, blowback or resistance from the larger Chicano community to, to work that doesn't have direct references that's a good question. You know, I've been showing uh, in many Latino galleries and in the groups. And most of my friends are Latino artists, and it, they've been very receptive. It's been good, but I also have to say I always feel like I'm that little unusual, you know, piece of work that's kind it's of not, it's not, not Trace, typical. It's not typical, yes. Grande's influenced. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so, um, so what, you're really, uh, uh, what you're really doing as far as like pushing forward mm -hmm. and yet still standing with right. uh, the community. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. could say that's definite, yeah. And okay. It's, it's good. I mean, that's the best of both worlds. You're actually, you're pushing the limits, but you're not receiving any blowback. Right. Which uh, I think, yeah. I think. I mean, be... if there is blowback, I'm not hearing it. You're not? Yeah, I'm Are not. they talking behind your back? They're talking behind my back. What's, They're being really kind to me, I think. The, me. Uh, so um, so we're, now you're going to be showing at the Vincent Price Museum. I am. When's the show on? That opens on next Saturday, the 27th from 4 to 6, and everybody's okay. welcome. And when, where, and when does it run until? Till May 21st. So okay. it's got a long run, which yeah. is great. And there's an art, uh, artist uh, panel in April 16th also. April 16th? Okay. Yeah. See, my only, my only rap on the um, Vincent Price Art Museum is, is, oh yeah, it's a free admission. Everybody's welcome, but you got to pay for parking. And well, they, have, they have parking enforcement. I don't know if I can say this because I'm kind of leery about it, but on the day of the opening, they do have a parking structure on Collegian, which is right next to the museum. And on the day of the opening, I believe it's free. We'll double check on that. That's I've, I've been to openings there and park there and I like, run in and I say, I'm parking there. And they say, it's okay. And yeah. If, yeah. If not, if you're really worried, then go to the fifth floor and it's only two bucks. Or take Uber. Or take Uber. Or take take Uber. the bus. Uh, take the, the bus. bus. <laughs> what, do you know, what bus line? I, 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 I could take the 60 to downtown. What do I have to transfer yeah, to? You know, I, don't, you know, the, I think maybe the metro line might be close. The I metro, yeah, think, the metro yeah, line. Yeah, oh, is it, is, is it's he, on is, Atlantic. It oh, he likes Atlantic. Atlantic. That's near the gold line. Yeah, okay. You'd have okay. to walk a little. You'd have to walk a little. But but the gold yeah. line? I'll, I'm not wearing shoes now, but I will wear tennis shoes then. Tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. Sneakers. Sneakers. Uh, yeah, yeah, what are they really this. called nowadays? Uh, yeah, yeah. Super... What are they called? Are they called Jordans? I mean, I if you don't have a pair of Jordans, are I don't know. I'm, I'm not up Jordans. on all that stuff. I don't stuff. know. I, just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like so, to be yeah. barefoot all the time. Uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's actually better for your feet. Too. It is, until so, you go to put on a pair of shoes. Yeah, yeah. so so um, now you're you're primarily making 2D work still, correct? Yes. And, yes. and uh, as an architect, I mean, you're making these 2D architects architecture spaces do you consider it to be yeah, well they're highly influenced by my architectural training yes they they do i mean i think the work today is much more architectural than it's ever been i feel very confident that you know we're talking about the horizontal and the vertical it's like the post and beam to me they're very structural and they've got a power about them and they're you know they're carrying weight the the colors i use are really basic primary colors with black gold silver i mean the colors are even sort of a an intense elemental choice along with mm -hmm. the, the ideas of just using a post and beam to create you know portals and um structural form wow yeah so so do you i mean in within this architecture there's obviously some reference i'm not sure how intentional i guess that my question really is how intentional is some of the references here to classic modernist uh painting mm. I'll leave that to the historians. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, nice I don't concern one. myself with it. I don't concern myself with that. I, I try to keep it really close to my heart and my interests and um, let other people decide. You just want to make you just want to make the forms that you make. I want to make the forms that I make. Yeah. I want to make them as well as I can and bring something of value to everyone. Because the geometric is rarely associated with um, the intuitive. And your work seems to be in conversation here. You're telling me that it seems it seems pretty intuitive. So 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 how, how I mean you know usually the intuitive has um, uh, you know it, it's called it's called the organic. I mean yeah. I mean but what, what's up with that? But I think you can be intuitive with just about anything. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. 
because I, I see I see a lot of uh, I see a lot of reductive painting, and uh, and I think that the the thing that's always interested me about your work, at least, has been there's there's something fresh and original about it that isn't just quoting or trying to be part of some historical dialectic that that matters to seven or eight academics. Um, so so what you're saying is these are all just these are you. There's an inherentness to them. Well, and everything that I bring to it, you know, I mean, from my history, my culture, am I still off? So sorry. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> all that time. Yes, it must be one of those days. What happened? The batteries died on this one. When did, she, when oh did it God. die? Did I come in? I Could you hear her talking at all? Yeah, yeah, I have it in my ear the whole time. Oh, okay. really? Oh, no. Wow. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Chaos. The world we live in. On the set of <laughs> Modern, Modern Art, Art Blitz. Blitz. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Do you know, Matt, that I make it a point never to wear blue because I don't want to clash with your hair? You know, <laughs> there's all kinds of clashing going to go uh, on. Uh, you can wear any color you want. I think uh, if it clashes, sometimes that actually works better. You I know. think it does, yeah. Are your color choices as organic as the, the structural choices you uh, make? The color choices are, are really elemental. I, Primary colors. I mean, I don't. I don't mix. I build. That's the other thing. I don't render my paintings like so, most artists do. They're built. So the color them. is right. uh, laid down, and unmixed. Wow. In fact, I brush stroke. They look really, you know, refined and. Um, they, they have a great finish. What, right. what they you're don't. Saying, they're not they're, as finished as you think. The, wow. the line is finished, but if you look at, you'll see brush strokes, wow. which is like a contained river. So it's a contained energy, and the tape is, and you know, so okay. taped in there. And do you mix like your green? That being. A, a secondary color do you mix that or do you no, go straight out no, of the tube I don't. if i if i use green it's right out of the tube wow out yeah. of the tube yeah and it, the part oh, of it oh, has to do with the immediacy too it's like i don't want, i'm just like a builder I, right. i've worked with three dimensional work and i build the paintings and even linda yes it has been great to have you as a guest thank you so much I for personally, having me as, as a fan of your art i've i've learned i've learned a lot about it and um, I'm looking forward to your show at the Vincent Price oh, Art great. Museum. Thank you. And as a fixture in the LA art scene, I'm sure you're going to be showing for years to come. I hope so. I feel like I'm just starting. Well, you know, every step of the way <laughs> you move up and then you're on that step going, I'm, you, it's not a plateau. It's time to move up again. Right. So, well, thanks thank for you, being thank on you Modern so much. Art thank Blitz. You, Lisa. Thank you so hey, much. You guys are doing great. a great job. I have to tell you. I love the show. Oh, thanks. Really? And uh, you're doing a great service for artists. So, you know. Sorry about the microphone trouble. I, I, great service for artists. I can't hear you. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I have to dub it in. All right. All right. Thank again. you. Thank you. Woo wee. All right. Well, that was fun. I actually, yes. I've curated uh, Linda into shows, and uh, that was like probably the deepest conversation we've had about her art, especially when you when you think about like abstraction sometimes is just so... Um, Abstract? Well, yeah, but, but it's, it's really is like, it is what it is, uh -huh. you know, and, and um, or in the words of Ad Reinhardt, uh, you know, what you see is what, you know, Frank Stella, what you see is what you see. And so I think with, um, I think the biggest issue for me with abstraction has always been that the intent of the, uh, are we, are we going to get microphones? Greg, Greg, can you pantomime? <laughs> we could play charades. We, we're, we're get, we got 20 minutes of charades with Greg Gibbs coming up. Uh, 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 uh. That yeah. could be actually really fun, but not if it's this. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the, the issue for me with abstraction has always been that it, it is often with figurative art, you can really divine what the artist's intent was. Mm -hmm. And with abstraction, there's the idea that, oh, it's universal. And yet so much of it is idiosyncratic and meant to be understood in specific ways in contexts that the, um, that the artist cannot control. And I know some artists, they don't care. They don't care what the context is, just let it go. But some artists are very particular, and, mm -hmm. and, and I wonder sometimes, like, well, make, you know, paint a, paint a painting of your cat then, you know? So are we ready with the microphone? All right. Wow. Well, now we're moving away from the abstract into the figurative and the Our narrative. Our next artist, who will be walking onto the set momentarily, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, a legend of lowbrow art. He has done many things beyond just the scheme and sphere of contemporary art, but is a giant in the field nonetheless. He currently has a show at the Robert Berman Gallery in Santa Monica. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the man, the myth, the legend, also known as Mora's old man, Greg Gibbs. How are you? Greg. 
Welcome. Hi, so good to have you here. Check, uh, check, check. Check. Yes, check, 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 check. Mike, check. Are we Mike, doing, are no, just tap Mike? on it and see what happens. Just see if anyone screams. Scream, yeah. <laughs> are, we, are we good? We're good. All right. All right. All right. We got a microphone oh, on. Okay, All right. Okay. So here we are, and look at that. It, it, it. I can. We can barely read it, but it, it says Greg Gibbs. It does. Out there, right? Yeah. 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 Now, now, um, this. Where is this uh, installation we're looking at here? Uh, where is this? Okay. There. That's good. The, that's the first ten years of my painting. And what, from what age to what age? From 10 to 21. You, wait, 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 wait. You, yep. Greg Gibbs, started painting at 10 years. I mean, I, I finger painted at 10 years old. Had quite, quite, a, quite a little legacy going for me there. You, are, you have been painting in oils? Uh, yeah, mostly oils. Yeah, and uh, pretty primarily self-taught. I had a little art school, uh, art class after school when I was younger. And, uh, but we, my, and my parents call that babysitting. <laughs> yes. And, uh, but you were good at it. It's a retrospective of 40 years of painting. Wow. And I'm 50. And, uh, wow, 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 wow. That's a, I just sort of jammed all the, uh, the paintings together. Uh, uh, but they run the gamut from uh, first painting when I was 11 of my sister, uh, the, uh, Virgin Mary that was in our house, my oh, parents' wow. house for since I was young. Wait, wait, done. are you a good are you a good Irish Catholic? I sure am, yeah. Yeah. I am or was? I am. You am? I am. I am. What was am. the reading today? Uh, that, uh, this I'm, is how we would go. Oh yeah, we I went guess to church, I'm mom elapsed. and dad, and my and my dad would be like, What was the reading today? Uh -huh. Right. And then you were like, uh <laughs> you But know. once you're a Catholic, you're always a Catholic in a way. You yeah. know, the trick is to still the missile so that you only have to go once and then you you know the next three Sundays. Oh. Pro right. tip. Did you have well, to I go to, to confession for doing that? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I used to uh, say I'm riding my bike to church because I had to go every Sunday. Yeah. And I would go to LACNA. Wow. And that became wow. my temple. That kind of makes you an yeah. art nerd. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're like these guys who watched C-SPAN when they were 10 and now they're like running the country. Yeah. Except, yeah. except now you're just running the art world, right? Yeah, and my parents are very encouraging, uh, and my mother actually signed me up for a life drawing class at Otis Parsons when it was on Wilshire, and she didn't know what a life drawing class was. Oh, <laughs> and how old were you? And she thought it was like fruits and vegetables. I'll never forget the first day, and my, the person who I worked with next to me, the person who sat next to me was Peter Falk. Oh my God. Wow. And Peter Falk taught me a lot about drawing. He'd be like, look at the rack. Get the boobs right. Get the nipples oh, right. Look her how, ass. How Get the curve you? on her ass. How I, was, I was like uh, 12. 12. What year 12. is this? God, I'm dating myself. You're, you're the... 78? And no, no. Yeah. And 76. It's fascinating because yeah. Peter Falk, having a glass eye, had a different percept yeah. sense of perception and 3D. Yeah. Than was Peter Falk's yeah. art any good? He I was great. He was a great. Uh, a great draftsman. It's not rotating. We're not moving. The pre I'm hitting the button, and it's not. It's not. Lots moving. of technical problems. I'm trying to go through your um, art. But here. the great is a great Tell story with the phone. first the first day that uh, of the class. My mother drove me, dropped me off, and then uh, she picked me up after class. And I remember sitting there, and I'd never seen a nude woman before. And in walks wow. this redhead in a robe, and she mm -hmm. gets in front of us, and she drops the robe, and I had no idea that this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And let's just say the carpet matched the drapes. Hey! Wow. And uh, I just started drawing away. Peter's like, come on, kid, you know, and I'm drawing, I'm drawing. And then uh, the class is all over. My mother picks me up, and uh, she says, how was class? I said, it was interesting. And uh, she took me home, and uh, she, didn't she, look said, at the... she said, she uh, said, well, what did you do? Let's see what you did. Let's see some of your oh, drawings. No. Okay. And I open up the portfolio, and she looks at it, and she says, did you have to color her in? <laughs> <laughs> True story. And oh, then she yeah, let yeah. me keep taking the class. Wow. Yeah. Open I, got, I got used to nude people, drawing wow. new people. So how is the nudist colonies these days? I, I don't know. <laughs> but they yeah, yeah. saw it what did, How did Peter Falk like it? Peter, you know, Peter, I don't know. He was a very, very now, funny was he, guy. Was Great he, guy. Was he ever Great in guy. character for Columbo? Uh, no, but no? he was Peter Falk. I mean, he's a real character. But I would go to school and tell my, my, my buddies that, you know, I've just been drawing nude girls with Peter Falk, with Columbo. 
And they'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't compute to a 12 year old, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. most most want to play army men. So so we have a, well, the painting here is, oh, I, one, I blew this up looks, specifically, you know why? Because I just wanted to show really people bad. that you can really paint. This is not all, oh, yeah. oh, thank you, you know, these are not, thank this is you. not a gag here. I mean, this is a zoom in and you're, and you're really, you know, you're, you're, you're really, you know, you're up there with the best of them here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, man. I mean, well, I mean, this is rendering, really nice right? You. Beautiful Rembrandt? Draft. Rendering. Rendering. <laughs> well, I'm oh, a big, yeah. I'm a big Rembrandt. The draftsmanship is really glorious. Oh, yeah. thank you. Well, I'm largely self-taught, you know, I, and I had to, it took a long time to try and, you know, figure out how to paint, but uh, that's you know, more of like a, a glazing Rembrandt style, so. And now this uh, is a picture from a recent uh, retrospect, the mid midlife crisis career retrospective. Which is no, midlife crisis retrospective, and it's a takeoff on mid career retrospective. Okay, yeah. but so, you were you know, having, like, judging from the artwork, you were having some crises. There's holding a bag I'm, of oranges. Well, the, I'm curious. I'm curious yes. about the little ones down here. Yeah, that's a, a show that I did in Taos, New Mexico, called Little People. Little people, and they're all. Uh, Little people, uh, okay. dwarves, and uh, so when you walked into the room, all the artwork was very, you know, three, 30 inches from the ground. So you actually felt like a giant, and you had to come to terms with the subjects of the paintings. Wow! So that was a recreation of that show. Wow! And so, so, um, oh, so that was in your middle, because you, you, you had many of your series that you've worked on before were included in this show. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, it's, it was a retrospective, but in the sense that. It was a commercial gallery, so I could only have work that could, was for sale. Okay. So all of the work that I've sold, like the best stuff, was not in the show. Oh, okay. Uh, so what you're saying is your mid-career retrospective, midlife crisis, your midlife crisis retrospective, and I'll explain that to you. Was like. the dregs of what you've produced? Well, yeah, no, but I wouldn't say that. Uh, the, the whole point of the show was that year was my Annus Horribilis. What do you call it? Yeah, Annus Horribilis. You had a, you had a bad year. Horribilis. And uh, my father died. Oh dear. And we, I've come from a family of 10. Oh. And in Hancock Park, grew up in Hancock Park in a big house. Mm -hmm. Thank and God. And I had the pool room, that was my studio, right. up until, you know, 18 years ago. Wow. Uh, I've been on my own, you know, out, out, right. I was out of the house. I lived in the back in this house, in the back house, and I lived in the pool, I worked in the pool house, and I just kept making artwork. I never really showed, you know, exhibited it here and there, and, uh, and I have people combine stuff. But I just kept throwing the stuff in the garage. Uh. And I would make it for my own pleasure, not really in, with the intention of showing it, although I'd you know, love to show it or sell it. Um, so when he died, we had to get rid of the house. Oh. And I had to clear out this garage, and there was just all this work that I forgot, I don't even remember making. So you basically, what do you do when you clean out a garage? You show it at Robert Berman. Right. <laughs> right. Wow. <laughs> it wasn't a garage sale. It was not a garage sale, sale but... but uh, no, but, but it's a, it, there's a little... Uh, this is uh, recent work. These were completed for the show. And Those are this, new. These, these are uh, uh, women so, with their cats? Uh, women with animals. There's one with a, with a, a rabbit, and there's one with a cat. And okay. these are, are sort of based on the idea that... You know, all, every, all these artists uh, make uh, giclés and reproductions, yeah. and it's a big, you know, the worst uh, you thing know in the merchandising world. and whatnot. Yeah. And these paintings are impossible to make copies of because the animals, I don't know if you can see, well, I'm in front of one of them, but they're uh, impasto, or they're really thick, and yeah. they're done with a palette, and they're really thick. Wow. And then the women are done very soft and very kind of feminine. Okay. And so there's a little push-pull 3D effect. Okay. And you also can't, you have to... You know, it's the original. You it, have to experience this work in person right. or you're not getting the whole thing. So a jacle is never, but that never right. stops artists these days from saying, No, no, hey, it doesn't stop. But it was the whole idea that, you know, there's nothing better than original. I mean, you can't right. really make a reproduction of a, of a Van Gogh or a Rembrandt or a, or you know, a, a beloved classic. pet like Mr. Bruce. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, this is your... Uh, this is the entrance. In, in, now, what are the sandwiches and, by Lisa? Oh, Lisa, that's, you got that's my new project. Mm. Those are Philippe's sandwiches. Philippe's sandwiches. Philippe's. Yeah. Or Philippe. Need, can, we get a, can we get a portrait of a lamb and blue cheese double dip? I, I probably have One it. One of I my favorites. Yeah, yeah I'm, my favorite I'm obsessed flavors. with Philippe's sandwiches, and I'm hoping to complete... You know... I've done a 
about 50 or 60 of them. I'm hoping to complete 108 for their anniversary in October. Wow, you know, and they're, they're going to be hung in the restaurant. So each one are you going to so that you can flavor? smell you can smell the sandwiches as you look at the painting. Can you can mind. you do me a favor next time you're yeah. at Philippe's? Can you get them to like make the portion? Are you painting them as with the skimpy portions that they have today? I don't think they're skimpy portions at all. I think oh. they are the perfect sandwich. Okay, they're too I can, I can, I can How go, do you compare them to Little Jewel of New Orleans right up the street? That's a new place. Philippe's goes back to 1908. Uh, a different those are po' boys. Yeah. Those are okay. You know, a sandwich, there's something about Do you know who invented the sandwich? The sandwich, the Earl of Sandwich. The fourth Earl of Sandwich. The fourth Earl of Sandwich. And he well, invented the sandwich. Well, playing so, gambling. So, right, so he could gamble and, and eat at the at same, same time. time. And he told his cook, give me two pieces of bread and, and meat. Uh, and so now a sandwich is, you know, you put tomato, you put lettuce, you put alfalfa sprouts, you put mayonnaise, you put mustard, you put all this other stuff. You know, a, 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 a hot dog. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes. It's considered a sandwich. A hamburger is considered a sandwich. Yes. Hamburger, you got mustard, you got the lettuce, tomato, you got the, you know. Schwamba and then, is a sandwich. Right. Is a burrito a sandwich? Oh, that's a, because is it's not. Is a taco a sandwich? It's not two people. Well, if it's a. My head hurts! <laughs> well, actually, in a court case, it was in a federal court, uh, state court case, it was determined that a burrito and a taco are sandwiches. Wow. Yeah. It's filling so in bread. I'm, I'm what, getting wait. to the purity of a sandwich, which is Philippe's, which is the perfect meat and two pieces of bread. And the dip, you know, they invented the double dip, right. the, the French dip. Well, Co Coles right. might no. argue that, but... Wait. You don't mention that. Gravy on a bun was invented at Philippe's. I could get into the whole history of how it was invented. Let me ask you this. Anyway. I love that you've let, done the research. Let me ask you this about Philippe's. Yes. Which of the girls at Philippe's... The Carvers. Which of the Carvers is the best? Oh. What about Judy? Oh, I don't know the I don't know the name. Judy, you don't know either. Judy? I probably I could recognize them all. Uh, if you had a lineup, Judy, I, could, I could recognize. There's them. Judy, and then there's Judy. Judy's Asian. Uh -huh. there's, there's not many Asian carvers there, uh -huh. and she had a daughter Mabel who who carved there for uh, years. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a woman there. I forget her name. She has she has um, gray hair. She's been there a long time. Yeah. And uh, she used to put the most meat at Lynn Folks. Independent of me, also told me when you go to Philippe's, there's a woman with a little gray hair. She She's she's the best carver, she's and I agreed carver. with him. Yeah, yeah. They, they 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 had a couple men try. The men couldn't do it, so it's only women. And if leaves, you know, you can get a single dip, double mm -hmm. dip, or triple dip. You can get a triple dip. I, it's called wet. I did not know wet. that. Yes. And could I, yeah. could you make my meat really wet? They have wet. five kinds of meat. They have turkey, they have ham, <laughs> they have pork, they have roast beef, and they have lamb. Yeah, the yeah. lamb is quite good. Yeah, yeah. the lamb is really good yeah. with the uh, blue cheese. With the blue really cheese, good. that's yeah. always been one of yeah. my favorites. Okay, yeah. this is one of my favorite series okay. of yours. Oh, now here we I'm, go. Now that I'm starving, um, <laughs> yes. This, this, and this was this, this installation shot is from your mid career, midlife crisis, career retrospective. Oh, there you go. This is uh, now you did paintings of photos of you yeah. visiting psychics. Right. I I spent. Uh, a good part of a year um, visiting psychics to find out what I should paint. I had no ideas anymore. And it ended up that I painted me visiting psychics Psychic. to find out the did ideas. Did you go to the, a lot of the Blinking Palm shops? I did. I went to a lot of them. I went like, to a lot of them. And this is just a part of the exhibition, the original exhibition. And above them are the psychic delic signs. Right. And those are reproductions of psychic signs you see on the side of the road. You see them everywhere. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. But so, they're done in a psychic delic way. So Psychic delic. Did, right. Were you often told that you had a lifetime curse on you that could only be lifted by, uh, by making candles as big as your body? Actually, yes. The, the middle one is the Beverly Hills Psychic, and she right. said that I have a dark cloud over my head, and I'm very, very screwed up, which yeah. I probably was. And let me... I'm sorry. Let me <laughs> no, no, no. And she said that, uh, you know, you need work. You need a lot of work she done. Could visit and she said, you could go to psychiatrist, and you go to psychiatrist, you do all the talking. You come and see me, psychic. I do all the talking. And how much did she want you to pay her? Eight hundred dollars for aura cleansing. An right. aura cleansing it's for eight hundred. It can be as much as a, it. It can go up to a dollar a minute. Oh, and you I, can take over your life. Here's yeah, the thing. Amazing. Here's the thing. You got a pretty clean fucking aura. You do. <laughs> you have a great vibe about you. Oh, thank you. Can, well, can so, we, so 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 yeah. uh, so. So I lost the house. I lost my father. I had health issues. So it was sort of this accumulation that ended up. You know, in the show was in December that the retrospective became, you know, and then the mid-career joke of, you know, midlife right. crisis is kind of, you know, as Robert Hughes, the famous art critic, said, a mid-career retrospective is like throwing an egg up in the air to admire its flight. 
Because uh, once it's over, baby, you've got a splatter. And you've said that's my the point of that's what he's over. making. That's the metaphor. Yes. But, yes. but then you've had a beautiful abstract painting on the ground. <laughs> or dinner. Yeah, if it's hot. But enough. I love how I'm like they're like holding my hand and they're touching my There's hand. There's a lot of NLP and stuff in yeah. that. Yeah. And now I can read hands. So I can I You I can read palms. Thing. Yeah, and feet. And yeah. feet. Yeah. And, and and you okay, we we're all what do, yeah, we gotta, <laughs> what do my feet tell? What do my feet tell you? Well, it's a whole uh, <laughs> <but> you, <laughs> Those are mats. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> So yeah, here's the Venice psychic. Uh -huh. She was really interesting. I'm wearing a German, national German t-shirt, which is, I always thought there was something there. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but um, it's always, and like, you know, you're explaining, and oh, oh here we go. This is at the yes. mid-life mid crisis it's retrospective. Right. Yes. Okay, Robert so Berman Gallery. This is the Robert Berman Gallery. Now this is, right. uh, now set this up for us. This is uh, okay. a friend of yours. Okay, well, you haven't shown, you haven't shown the, not our big right? installation. Okay, so, oh, yeah. so, so well, I did a whole thing on outhouses. I collect outhouses. You collect outhouses, right? And I collect this figure with the double eyes that's on the side. Okay. And I okay. created this whole mythology about this artist named R. Biggs, R. Biggs. which is a takeoff on uh, R. Mutt. Uh, you know, uh -huh. Duchamp yeah, signed yeah. the urinal, yeah. and um, also uh, my name, the G's and the B's right. switched. Okay. So, uh, in my investigation of outhouses, which I love outhouses. Outhouses were the, the great American architectural structure. And the whole idea that so America sort of went downhill after indoor plumbing. Plumbing came in. Yeah. And Duchamp, Marcel Duchamp, who the show at Robert Berman right now is I recreated all the Duchamp artwork. No okay. way. An appropriation show. Yeah, I did the big glass, I did the urinal, I did so I'm a very it's like I, I'm, I'm sort of obsessed with Duchamp. He kind of always, mm -hmm. and I say his name wrong, uh, he kind of always has a thread through. He's a through, through, through line of my work yeah. and stuff. Um, but uh, anyway. What did he say about I'll talk about that. What did that Duchamp be, say about outhouses? Oh, he, well, you know, he said the greatest contribution that America has made to culture is plumbing. <laughs> and, then, and then there's that whole idea <laughs> of... Okay. <laughs> so I, there's a huge installation, or there was a huge installation in the, in the show uh, that originated at Laguna Museum of Art. Yeah. It was actually shown there twice. So I found these exploding outhouses. An exploding outhouse. And they're big in the south. Are they like a 4th and of July thing? They're, they're a bank that when you put money in, they explode. So my theory is always that, you know, Okay, don't, we're gonna, don't we're gonna save watch, money. We're going to watch the explosion. Now. Oh, we're going to watch the explosion. There it is, our big exploding outhouse. There it is. And I don't know if you can see what there, that is. What is that? It's a trail hey, of poop. Hey, the monitor just went out. It's a trail there of poop. There we go. Okay, so can you, you put, see the, the exploding device? It's a mousetrap. It's a mousetrap. So you drop the money in. Yeah, you have to load it. You load the mousetrap, and then you put the sides on, and you put the front, you put oh. the roof. The roof has a little slot. And the minute you drop and a coin you, in, it explodes. So and it's a great the, explosion. Right, but the, the horror of giving a small child that doesn't know this, here's I, your, your savings yeah. bank. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. It's, it's, a whole, it's a whole kind of, uh, you know, Americana kind of thing. Yeah. I have about 10 different exploding outhouses. Any, any How do you find these? Uh, eBay is a good place to, to find them. You didn't build this. Oh, this one I built. I built it. And I have ten of my collection, and here's, I, I, here's built, the, uh, I built I built a few of them. I'm That's, to get to that the, one I built. To the aftermath here, but my s yeah. There we go. This and is there the it aftermath. is. And you see the walls inside are painted like an explosion. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> okay. great. Yeah, and there's, there's the it. coin that started it all. You gotta love it. You yeah. gotta love it. There's yeah. the coin. So, but, and, then, uh, and then now, now this emanates from a much larger installation right, you did. Right. This is the R. Biggs uh, Memorial Museum and the R. Biggs Commemorative Privy. And this is from the Shack Show in uh, the Laguna Museum. Yeah. Originally, it was in the Juxtapose Factor Show. The Juxtapose ah. Factor Show, which right. was, where was that uh, show at? Uh, Laguna Museum. The of Laguna Art. Museum. Yeah, it's okay. been in the museum twice. Yeah. They yeah, couldn't believe I was coming they're back. They're all no. They were no, 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 back. <laughs> yeah. Because oh, I'll be in the show with a piece I've already shown. Great. Yeah, that's just a genius. There's literally a thousand pieces in there. Wow. Yeah. wow. yeah, and they're all like puns and sort of jokes played on this character. I think you can see him um, uh, all the way to the uh, right. Uh, it's, a, it's a trick. It's, it basically has three themes. It's barroom humor, bathroom humor, and hillbillies. And it's about uh, this character, 
and you can see, you find it in thrift stores all over the place. A lot of people collect them, and it's, he has two eyes on one side. And then the bar, it's in a bar, and the bartender distracts you, and then he flips it, and it has four eyes. And you think you're, you're drunk. drunk. You know, uh, so it's about the duality uh, of being uh, conscious, unconscious, uh, sober, uh, drunk, um, and so there. It's just a riff on that, and one idea leads to another, leads to another idea, leads to another, and inside the, the privy you can't see, but if you go around, there, if you look through the moon cutout, you see. Um, well, some people think it's a mirror, but it actually goes on forever. It is, it's a mirror. And it has a whole collection on the opposite side. Uh -huh. And then you could stand in front of it and see more of it. But there's all, I remade outhouses. And the whole idea is collecting, is to make a fake collection. You know, I did the, the film about Long Gone John. Yes. Right. The treasure Long Gone John. And he collects. It, was that an award winning film? Did it win any awards? No, but it pre premiered at South by Southwest. That's an award that's, that's in and of itself. It, it played itself. at Museum of Modern Art. Okay. That's in a huge. special um, themed um, uh, exhibition, or uh, I'm sorry, a film series. Um, so where were we? Well, oh, so, so it's all place. about collecting, codifying, like getting into having every little thing. You know, some people collect Pez dispensers, or they collect... Uh, you name it. My mother but, collects elephants because she's a Republican. It, <laughs> so I, I decided, I decided to make a fake collection. But my question is, why do outhouses have the the moon? The moon. Out? Well, there's a lot of theories about that, but that was designated as a place to, uh, you know, you have to go outside. Right. If you, you know, here, here, outside here, here's what here's what I was told is when you are sitting on the toilet in an outhouse, look down and you'll see the reflection in the septic tank of a moon. You got, the Gab Fest has to end sometime. I'm oh, very yeah. sorry, but uh, we've got like a minute left and I gotta thank Greg Gibbs. Yes. My co-host, Lisa you. Derrick. Oh my gosh, this has been nice such a thrill. Yes, nice to meet you. It was, I think we had a good time here today. We did, yeah. And, um, you can join us. We, uh, we dropped the mic we, several you know, times. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, uh, we had a couple technical difficulties, but we survived. My thanks to our guest, Linda Ariola, Greg Gibbs, my lovely co-host, Lisa Derrick, and of course, everybody tuning in live at five every Sunday. Of course, we're archived on YouTube, but going to dronebox.com, you can watch this show live at 5 p.m. Pacific. 5 p.m. Every five. Sunday. Five. Even if five. only one of us is here. Five. So five. Um, thanks for watching, and there will be more Modern Art Blitz next Sunday. Until then, mm -hmm. I don't have a tagline.